Let us now look at the 37 practices of a bodhisattva. Today we will get into the trainings of Bodhicitta, mainly five parts. First of all is the training in the six paramitas and then the four methods of training and then the, the reason of eradicating afflictions and training in right mindfulness as well as the training in the mind of benefiting others, also the um, rededication of merit to the perfect body. So these are the five aspects. Let's look at the first one, which is training in the six paramitas. And out of the, four, uh, the six paramitas, the first one is training in generosity. It says that if, when wishing for enlightenment, one must give up even one's body, so giving up external objects goes without a question. Therefore, it is the practice of the bodhisattvas to be generous without any hope for reward or positive uh, results. Just as it is taught in the story of the Buddha's past lives, when wishing to attain the level of a perfect Buddha, the great enlightenment, one must repeatedly give away one's limbs or head or even one's whole body to benefit others. Needless, it is then to to say that one must give away such things as one's outer wealth, enjoyments, children, spouse, and so forth, and so on and so forth to the others. It is therefore necessary to train in the practice of generosity. Regarding that, one grants the three kinds of generosity, along with the roots of virtue and their results, to others, embracing this with an extraordinarily uh, generous attitude. One does not hope for any kinds of rewards or any kinds of uh, repayment of their kindness and there is no expectation of getting food, wealth and so forth in return. Likewise, one does, one does so not striving for any karmic ripening that is to occur in the form of great enjoyments in the future lives. Such is the practice whereby bodhisattvas train in the parameter of generosity. In entering into the middle way, it says that the parameter of generosity constitute the ability to give, and then according to the way of Bodhisattva states, mentally giving away to all beings, all one's possessions together with the result, is said to be the parameter of generosity. Thus, the essence of generosity is the virtue of a generous attitude and the action of body and speech fully motivated by this attitude. According to the Sutra, this is called the parameter of generosity. Now, the generous attitude and the actions of body, speech, and mind, the, uh, body and speech, are fully motiva motivated by this attitude. This is the, the parameter of generosity. That means, based on this attitude, this mind, then the actions as well as speech would follow that attitude and carry out certain activities, and that particular action is called a generosity. Whatever it may be, the whatever kinds of possessions it may be, correctly giving all of them is the first of the three kinds of generosity, the generosity of material goods, protecting all sentient beings from fear of mankind, non-humans, and elements is the second. Now, uh, when it comes to non-human, uh, whenever there are the uh, ill ones, the patients, if we were to go there to uh, chant sutras for them, to um, help them out in their sickness so that they would not fear anymore, this is also called generosity, the generosity of fearlessness. And then there is the generosity of teaching. So to teach and mistakenly the Holy Dharma and to point out the and instruct the others in wholesome worldly livelihood is the third, is the generosity of the Dharma. Nowadays, there are all kinds of teachings on the different traits of life, for example, how to um, carry out your livelihood, how to earn money, all of those are important as well. 
So when it comes to the generosity of Dharma, it is not necessarily only the transcendental Dharma. Rather, sometimes it could be the Dharma or the teachings that guides people how to lead a right livelihood. That is also called the generosity of uh, giving teaching, the gen generosity of Dharma. Nowadays, we have some Dharma practitioners that have already received a, a great deal of uh, Dharma teachings. If at times when the uh, opportunities are right, you can give them teachings on the 400 verses of uh, Madhyamika or the Shurangama Sutra, so I'm not sure if you would be able to give teachings on the Shrangama Sutra because it definitely requires lots of wisdom. And sometimes people without the foundation of Dharma, they would not be able to understand the Shrangama Sutra. In that way, you can give them their transmission. So this is the generosity of Dharma. And then according to Give, according to Bodhisattva Charivatara, as the manner of giving rise to a generous attitude, it says that my body and the likewise my enjoyments, as well as my virtues of the three times, I shall give away without any sense of loss to bring about the benefit of beings, to support for one's conduct. There are two aspects involved. One is meditation on the mind of enlightenment, and the second is making aspirational prayers toward enlightenment. So there are the, uh, these are the two aspects. The first one is to actually carry out actions to benefit others, to um, practice the activities of generosity, such as the generosity of material, of your wealth, of uh, your visa cards. So all of these activities that's associated to the practice of generosity. And then the second one is making aspirational prayers so to um, actually aspire for bodhicitta, for in, towards enlightenment, is the root of all giving and is thought to be supreme. This also is the case in terms of other paramitas. All of the other paramitas has these two aspects. The first one is meditation on the mind of enlightenment, and the second one is to make aspirational prayers towards enlightenment. So when it comes to uh, keeping pure priests, um, then first of all you need to meditate upon this and the second one is to make aspiration same as patience and so on Concerning the faults of keeping and the qualities of giving, the paramita compendium, compendium it is the paramita compendium states, through giving, one will not be overpowered by negative emotions. Miserliness is not the noble path, but the creator of negative emotions. Generosity is the supreme path. Anything other than that is said to be below the noble path. The Buddha said that other than the path of generosity, all the other paths are the uh, inferior path. The path of generosity is the good path, and without generosity, it is the inferior path. Concerning this, there are many other statements, as for having no hope for reward or ripening. Ornament of the Sutras mentioned the generosity that is without expectations, which is said to be the extraordinary way of practicing generosity. Moreover, Lord Atisha explained since these impermanent enjoyments are pointless, practice generosity adorned with excellent qualities. And he continued in this way, the supreme generosity is non-attachment. Gompawa also said the root of generosity comes down to non-attachment. Non-attachment is difficult to practice as well. And from Potawa, the Gishi said through the habituation of training in 
giving away the trivial, such as needles and thread. Uh, so basically, you start off by giving the trivial material possessions, uh, such as maybe a pen, and then slowly increase it to a coin, and then slowly, when your generosity started to expand to uh, more people, not just people that you have better relationships with, but uh, even others. So one will come to be able to give away anything without attachment. Eventually, you would be able to reach to that level of generosity. However, you should not give up the other paramitas, such as precepts and such as patience at the times of practicing generosity. If you were to sacrifice the other paramitas in order to um, survive the practice of generosity, it is just like to mend your flesh on your buttocks with the flesh from your ear. I have never heard of that happening nowadays in the in the surgeries, but I've heard that people would use their skin or flesh from their buttocks to their face. This is apparently the technology right now. I'm not sure how Potoa knows about it back then, who said that uh, who would cut off one's ear and attach it to one's butt. Likewise, do not, for, do not for the sake of generosity cut away flesh from the thigh or of your um, discipline. What he meant is that if one were to practice the paramita of generosity and sacrifice the other practices, uh, the, the other practices of uh, uh, other paramitas, then it would be quite a it would be such a pity <laughs> Uh, Over here it says that and the, there's the uh, flesh of the butt and then the flesh from the thigh. Maybe this particular metaphor shows the importance of discipline because without discipline, it is as if one do not have the thighs, uh, so one cannot walk. Maybe that's the meaning of this particular example, this particular metaphor. In accordance with the above, Sharawa said, I will not explain to you the benefit of generosity, but I will explain to you the shortcomings of miserliness. It seems that the geshis of uh, katampas are quite odd in some ways. So we should not look down at people with odd personalities or speak of odd words because we never know. We would never know of their uh, insights, their level of insights and realization. To continue, he said that since virtue will thereby not decrease, but it will ins instead be acquired without any hardship, it is taught that the ordained ones too should practice material generosity. According to Madhyamika, it says that usually the lay practitioners should practice the generosity of uh, materialistic uh, provisions, but the ordained ones should practice uh, the generosity of Dharma. But over here, it says that the ordained ones should too should practice material generosity. Furthermore, from Gyalse Tokme himself, the sage has praised generosity that is free from exceptions of gaining anything in return in this life or karmic ripening in future lives. This kind of 
practice is the best, is the most pure form of uh, uh, the practice of material generosity. Also, may I, when seeing one in need, give rise to delight and with a smiling, friendly face, give away with a mind free from any hope, whatever is desired, my enjoyments, even my own body, my life, my flesh and blood. Uh, sometimes the compose over here, whenever they see beggars, they would say that, well, why did this beggar come here today again? Uh, why didn't you ask him to leave? I'm not sure if that uh, you know, Kempo had practiced this. And then he said that thus he made aspirational prayers to train in the three kinds of generosity and practiced accordingly. <coughs> Gan